Good morning and welcome to this time of reflection for the readings for the last Sunday after Epiphany, the Transfiguration, as well as it being Valentine's Day, the 14th of February, 2021. Let us just take a few moments of silence to gather our thoughts in prayer. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. You lay the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth. To you be praise and glory forever. As your living word, eternal in heaven, assume the frailty of our mortal flesh. May the light of your love be born in us to fill our hearts with joy, as we say, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our calling for this, the last Sunday after Epiphany, the Transfiguration. Almighty God, on the Holy Mount you reveal to your chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured. Mercifully deliver us from the darkness of this world, and change us into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A prayer for those who are coping with the coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick. And lift up all who are brought low that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm number 50, verses 1 to 6. Psalm 50, verses 1 to 6. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silent. Before him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who make a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our appointed gospel for this morning is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. Six days, after Jesus took, six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and led them up to a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when the, we looked around, they saw no one with them, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them not to tell anyone about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today marks the last Sunday after Epiphany. We've had quite a journey, haven't we? We have started in the manger with Jesus' birth. We've followed him through his early ministry, to his baptism, to the selection of his disciples, and now we find him on this Sunday transfigured. There's a lot happening in today's gospel. For example, you know, when we hear that Peter and James and John were selected by Jesus to witness this transfiguration, you have to ask yourself why. 
What was it that Jesus saw in those three disciples? That they were ones to be the witnesses to the transfiguration. We simply don't know. And then when we see them gathering up and going up to the top of the mountain, we have to ask yourself, why is it that Moses and Elijah are there? Well, perhaps it's because Moses is the ultimate in law giver. He gave the people of Israel the law. And Elijah, well, he gave God's voice to the people of Israel. So you have the basically the greatest lawgiver and the greatest prophet speaking to Jesus. Mark doesn't tell us what they're talking about. He simply says they had a discussion. But it's what Peter does at this point that always attracts my attention. He rushes up to him and says, listen, let me build three buildings for you. Let me, let me put up three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Because this is such a special moment, we shouldn't, we shouldn't just leave. We should take advantage of this time to really talk to Moses, talk to Elijah, get a chance to see what they were thinking. But what happens next? Out of all that, God's voice comes down and says, this is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. What a thing to say. Listen to him. Hadn't these disciples been listening to Jesus their entire time with him? Why was it so important that God say, listen to him? Well, perhaps he wasn't just speaking to those disciples. He was speaking to the church at large. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to what he has to say. He can bring knowledge and understanding. He can bring the love of my, myself, God, to you. Listen to him. And then, because the, Jesus says, no, we, we're not going to put up these dwellings, they go back down. They leave that mountaintop. And as they're going down, Jesus says, listen, tell no one about this until after I have risen from the dead. You know, how could you keep something like that quiet? Why wouldn't you want the disciples to rush around and say, you should have seen what we witnessed. We've seen Moses and Elijah. We've seen Jesus transfigured into a white glow. His clothes were so bright that no bleach could ever make them any whiter. And so we see these things, events happening. But what does the transfiguration mean to you and I? Well, I think it speaks to the fact that from time to time, you and I, through the power of the Spirit, get to go to that mountain with Jesus. We get to see the transfigured Jesus. And it's during those moments when we actually are, are with Jesus and with the Spirit, through the Spirit, that we too don't want to leave. We want to set up tents. We want to stay there. We want to be in that glow. But Jesus says, no. Come back down. There's work for you to do at the bottom of the base of the mountain. I think that's what's so interesting about this. You know, on my very first deployment, I was on HMCS Kootenai. And I remember it vividly. It was the first night out. And I was watching the sunset. And it was magnificent. I'd never seen a sunset more beautiful. And in a moment... It was gone. In a flash, all that beauty disappeared. And I was just dumbfounded. I, I thought, what could I do next? I've just witnessed this most beautiful thing. And then I got on to the job at hand, to ministering to the crew of the Kootenai. But in that moment, I was on that mountain peak with the Holy Spirit, and I didn't want to leave either. But I had to come down and go on with the job that I was tasked to do, the ministry that I was given. And I think that's what this transfiguration passage is all about. It speaks to the highs that you and I witness from time to time. But it also reminds us that, well, we have to come back down off that mountain. We have to be with the people. We may never discuss the events that we have witnessed on the top of that mountain. We may never share them with anyone. But we have experienced them, haven't we? And it's in that coming down from the mountain that we share God's glory. We listen to him. So I'd ask you to think about that this week. 
Think about the times that you have been on that mountain peak and give thanks that you've shared with the Holy Spirit the power of God. But also give thanks that in that we have come down off of that mountain and have shared the love of God to the people around us. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pray for all those now who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. We ask for God's healing grace for Bob Honders, Elena, Pauline, Velma, Nancy, Robin, James, Angela, Krista, Grace, Marjorie, Pelota, Yvonne, Gore, Norma, Richard, Stephen, Michael, Ethel, Shirley M, Carol G, Linda, Carrie, Matthew, Barbara, Kelly, the Bridges family, Pat, and to those known to you alone. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are in retirement or long-term care homes, remembering especially Jim, Anita, Thelma, Pauline, David and Catherine, and Irene. And now, O oh Lord, we lift our own prayers and petitions, which weigh heavy on our hearts. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you promise to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. As we take our worship, praise, and prayer from this place and into our daily lives, may our lives be sustained through the love of your heaven, our Heavenly Father. May we feel the presence of our Savior walking beside us and know the power of the Spirit in both our actions and our words. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for sharing this time of reflection with me, and have a great week ahead. Amen.